Hello and welcome to the HTML5 App Tester tutorial. In this tutorial we will be looking at how to make the most of the app so that you can test your web, or your web code app on an iOS device without the need of any certificates or an iOS developer license. The first thing you will need to do is to download these three files either from the YouTube video or from the app as we will see in a minute. Once you have downloaded them you have to add them to the directory where you have all your code. For instance, here I have a sample app that has an index.html file and I have my CSS folder, my image folder and my JavaScript folder and I've added the three files I had the Cordoba plugins.javascript, Cordoba.javascript and plugins. Plugins contains a series of plugins that is all the interface between Objective-C and the JavaScript plugins. As you can see here I have those three files as well so I've mixed them. The next thing you need to do is to upload this code to an FTP server. It is really important that once you upload the code to the FTP server, you are able to access the index.html from your browser. For instance, I have uploaded it to a server, and if I trust it, I can access them. And basically, it's an app that contains a series of, of buttons that allows me to do things on the device so that we can check if the app is actually working and we can do things like accessing the contacts, the geolocation, or performing a file transfer. Perfect. Once we've done that, we can turn our attention to the app, where we see that once we start, we have a series of apps. Here we have some pre-populated apps I've been testing. And uh, you can easily access information at any moment using this button, which shows you an extras menu where you can either view this tutorial on YouTube, share the app with friends, or send a link with the files we're testing, which are the files we've seen previously. Perfect. Organizing the apps is really simple, as they are organized always by the last one you've added, but you can always search if you have a lot of them using the search bar capability and you can search for example for a video and you would just get the one with video or you can cancel deleting a, an app is as easy as using a swipe to delete you just have to swipe the 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 row to the right perfect so now we're going to see how we can add a new app the first thing you have to do is click on the plus sign as you can see it asks me for a series of parameters the name of the app the description of the app the URL of the www folder we can either enter this manually or we can scan a QR code. This is particularly interesting when you're visiting websites such as the related from UNED, the National University Education Distance Education, where you suddenly have the iOS tester icon. If you click on it, you will find you have a QR code you can directly scan with your app, and that way you will be able to have all the fields be populated for you. It will even download an icon for the app, which is what's happening on the previous one. In order to download an icon, it's really simple. The only thing you have to do is add on your public folder an icon on PNG. If you don't, a default icon will be added, as we'll see now. So we're going to ask to add a new one, and we are going to call it device test, for instance. We're going to tell them that it's a uh, app to test device capabilities. And we are going to add the URL we've, we've written before. There's no need to write the HTTP part because if you don't do it, the system will automatically do it for you. So I'm just going to go for the second part. Uh, sorry. www.test.parsap.com. Perfect. I'm going to save this. And as you can see, I've automatically gotten the default phone gap icon. If I had an icon.png stored in my file system, I would have downloaded the icon and it would show up here as these ones do. So now if I access the device test, I get the same web page I saw before, now it's responsive, it was meant to be for mobile phones, and you can see that I have a series of buttons, so if I click on different things, like for instance, uh, file transfer, this will initiate a file transfer, and as you can see the file transfer has succeeded, so we've been able to simulate a file transfer inside our app. Or we can also access, for instance, vibration, which works. Or we could access the network info, something which a web page could never actually do until it tells us that we are connected via Wi-Fi because we're on the simulator. We can't access the camera because the simulator does not have a camera, but we would be able to do that on the on the actual device. We can access orientation information, which gives us the different. It doesn't work on the simulator either, but we can get the geolocation of the user. We get an alert as you have seen to get to 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 see the location, and we get here the latitude and the longitude. We can also access the contacts on the device. gives us permission to access our contacts. It's working perfectly like an native app. And here it tells us that it has found two contacts with the letter T in them, so it's able to read through all of our contacts and find the ones with the letter T. And we can even access an in-app browser, which is a native browser that later allows us to return to a phone gap app. And basically this will load the, the Apache Cordoba main web page. But as you can see, we're able to load the native 
the native web browser inside your app, so it's working perfectly. Uh, the other systems work as equally as well. And well, I hope you. And if I return to apps, I can return to my app and test another app. It's as simple as that. Well, I hope I, you have enjoyed this short video on how to work with the HTML5 app tester, and I hope it helps you to make your iOS developments a bit better, and you enjoy it and make the most of it. Thank you very much for your time.